which are connected in many ways. And so I was a huge fan of Bob Marley and Whalers and stuff. So yeah, just to start playing a little one drop, he's going, this is great. We played some old time rock and roll, some Carl Perkins, and um, just had a great time. And other guests started coming to the party and, and Paul and Linda kind of snuck out the back door. They didn't want to deal with everybody. And um, the very next day, I was at home and my mum was there and the phone rang and she picked it up and she dropped the phone. And I said, you're right, mum, what's up? And she goes, it's, 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 I'm sweating bullet. I was like, no, <laughs> and he was two hours late arriving, so I was a nervous wreck. He came in, and Lawrence Juba, who became the guitarist at the same time, was there, and we just started playing. I don't remember what we played, but it was, I had a smile from ear to ear, and it felt so natural, and he's such an amazing bass player, and so that's not talked about often either, by the way. He's just, he's just harmonizing with himself all the time. It's fantastic. So um, he said, well, sounds good to me, man. I think we've got a group. And that was that. So that's how I met Paul. And a lot of my life has been like that. I'll fast forward it to, for another example of the serendipity I managed to enjoy. I was looking after Wings. We didn't really break up or nobody got fired. It just sort of fizzled out. And uh, one or two episodes that weren't very delightful. But it, it, we never stopped being friends and we never stopped talking. It just, he wanted to go, the actual reason was he wanted to record with George Martin again. Sorry, Sir George Martin. And uh, apparently George didn't want to work within the constraints of a band. And I'd already said to Paul, you know, I've got to be honest with you, I'm really happy to do this gig. But if I had your money, I'd hire Steve Gadd. <laughs> <laughs> Who was my favorite drummer at the time. And he said, Steve Gadd, who's that? I said, well, it's that guy that played on 50 Ways of you can love it, apart from anything else, you know, but in my, my book, he's, he, he's the best there is. So Steve Gadd ends up being flown out to do the next album, which is, which is great. I'm happy to, I mean, you know, all due respect. I mean, what a wonderful player. So, but we continued to be friends and I thought, well, what am I gonna do now? And the phone rang the following day after the news broke about the wings breaking up, and it was Ian Anderson. Jethro Tull, I don't know if anybody ever heard of that man. And uh, this is all way before your time, so. But <clears throat> he was a charming guy and he said, uh, we just lost our drummer and we, hey, uh, you're probably looking for a gig and I'd, I'd like to uh, hire you. And I said, well, I'm really flattered. I said, I'm, yeah, is this to record a new album or to, he said, no, we're just about to go on tour with a new album. I said, well, um, Stylistically, it's, it might be a stretch. Could you get me a copy and I can have a listen? And uh, I said, sure. And so they couriered over a copy of this new album and I put it on and my heart sank because it was like, it was the early 80s and everyone was playing disco music. We used to call it piece of the floor on the floor. And, do -ch, do -ch, do -ch. and this is a Jethro Tull record, one of the best English progressive rock bands I'd ever heard. And they're playing disco. And I went, I cannot do this, I cannot do this. So I actually faked an excuse and I said I was really tired. And uh, I, uh, to be honest, I think I need to take a break. You know, it's been a really hard three years. And he said, well, I'm sorry to hear that. He said, because um, I am privy to how much Mr. McCarty was paying you. And before you say no, I'm prepared to double that. <laughs> and I still said no. <laughs> Stupid boy. <laughs> Foolish. Um, and I said, I do need to take some time off. And I'd been over to America and fallen in love with New York and had a couple of trips upstate to Woodstock. And, and uh, I said, I just want to take a sabbatical. I want to take a year. I want to think this out. I want to be somewhere where I can make some noise without bothering anybody. So I went to a realtor in Woodstock. And I told them that I needed a house. I want to put the drums on the back deck and I could play to the hills and not bother anybody except the deer and uh, whatever else is there. 
And I looked at all kinds of places and, and the realtor finally, he said, I think I've got the place for you. And we went going up this driveway and it was a gorgeous house, it was 35 acres. And I said, this can't be in my budget. It cannot be, I can't afford this. He says, it is in your budget. I said, it's not possible. He says, it is. I said, why? He said, the house has baseboard heat and it's electric. You've got to keep the house warm because of all the pipes will crack in the winter. And I went, oh. And they showed me the bills and the, it was about, the, the heat for the house was three times higher than the rent. So I said, oh, I see. I said, well, I can, it's got fireplaces. I can do it with wood. He said, yeah, mm. chop a lot of wood. And I said, that's okay. So I took this place and I'm there maybe a month and a half on my sabbatical. And a car pulled into the driveway and a gentleman got out with long curly hair and he knocked on the door. And I said, uh, can I help you? He said, are you Steve Hoy, the British drummer? And I said, I am, who's asking? He said, my name's Michael Lang. I was one of the promoters of the Woodstock Festival and I happened to manage Joe Cocker and we're looking for a drummer. Um, can you do Saturday Night Live this week with Jennifer Warnes? We've got this song up with her. So, how is that possible? I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm in Woodstock for the first time in my life. I rent a house, it belongs to Joe Cocker's manager, a fellow countryman who's looking for a drummer. That's the end of my sabbatical right there. So I've enjoyed that sort of serendipity throughout my life. I don't know why, other than I tend to put a smile on my face in the morning, be like this with everybody. So 